Okay. Recording is All right. I am so honored. There's a lot of people here right now on the line uh, in our private Zoom room. And if you are joining me on Facebook as well, welcome everyone to High Speed Healing Wednesdays. This is a special bonus call that I felt very, very called to do um, today. And in, in light of what's been, you know, so much going on on our planet and um, I felt very drawn to bringing us together for the purpose of a group meditation. And for those of you that don't know me that are perhaps here for the first time, my specialty is helping people who suffer from chronic pain, depression, anxiety, trauma, uh, battles with things like different addictions, food, binge eating, um, insomnia is a big one that people come to me for help with, headaches, and lots of chronic conditions where people have tried everything and nothing's helped them. Everything that I do has to do with the fact that what you're witnessing in the outer world, in the physical world, is a reflection of the inner state of consciousness. And this is true whether it's hip pain, extra weight that you just can't get off no matter what you try, politics, your relationships, your finances, your romances, everything that you're experiencing in the physical world is a reflection of the inner world and what goes on in our own personal individual lives is a reflection of the macro of what's going on on planet Earth. And what's going on on planet Earth is also reflected in the, in the micro in our individual lives. It goes both ways. And so this is why blaming other people, places, things, institution, blaming keeps us stuck in a victim mode. And we are way, way more powerful than that. We are not victims. We are limitless spiritual beings having a very unusual human experience and we're having it collectively and we're interpreting it in different ways. And the conventional way of thinking can oftentimes keep us stuck in blaming in feeling limited and powerless. And so I wanted to bring us together today to meditate together and I'll guide it. If you've never meditated before, don't freak out. <laughs> You'll be fine. I'm gonna guide you through this and you cannot do it wrong. And the reason that I have, well, let me back up. When I was 15 years old, I won't tell you how long ago that was. Maybe you'll think it's just a few years ago, <laughs> but it was quite a while ago. And I learned to meditate when I was quite young. And it literally saved my life. It is such a powerful tool. And there's many different ways to meditate. I teach a particular way. I actually, what I learned at 15 was transcendental meditation. And I still practice that to this day. Now, the reason that I feel so strongly about meditation is because it is, it was the life-changing pivot point for me in how I even ended up bringing in the high speed energy healing method, it was because I, by practicing meditation, I had so many inner awarenesses and inner changes. It literally laid the soil and prepared the soil for me to be able to activate the healing gifts that lie, lay dormant within me. And they're dormant within you too, by the way but they were dormant within me and they helped me clear out. Now, along with other tools that I did over the course of many years, don't get me wrong, but I had some very profound, what I would call spiritually transformative experiences that I was not expecting. They were unexpected and they came as a result of meditation. And they aligned me with my higher purpose, which I had no clue what that even meant at the time, nor was I looking for it. So 
it changed my life. And since that time, and that's been many, many years now, I have found, uh, I, I also came up with different ways to help other people meditate who were having trouble meditating. Because a lot of people say, oh, it's just not working for me. Oh, I think I'm doing it wrong. Nothing's happening. It's boring. I, I don't know what, to, nothing's, ha you know, I feel like nothing's changing, nothing's happening. And, and I've been hearing this for years from people. So quite a number of years ago, I developed five different techniques that are based on your particular learning style, whether you're visual, auditory, kinesthetic. And it helps people find a, a meditation technique that really resonates with them better. Now, I don't, I'm not gonna be teaching that workshop tonight. I'm just gonna guide you through something that will speak to all of you and help all of you, even if you don't relate to all of, uh, all of it. But you'll be able to follow along and you'll be able to do it. And here's the really cool thing. There's actual science behind meditation. Back in the 1970s, when Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, he was the, the man that brought meditation to the West. He was the first to ever do science studies around meditation and the effects of it. And we know for a fact that when a group of people like us, yes, you, even if you've never meditated before, when we join together for the purpose of meditation, because there is a humongous field of energy and information that we're all swimming in, we live in a field. This is the basis of all my work with the high speed healing, with my pain free living program, with every interview, everything I teach. I talk about this bio field, which is a field that surrounds the body, but there's a larger field that we're literally all interconnected via the field. It's a state of consciousness, whether you are aware of it or not, and we're all connected via the field. And when they did these meditation studies, it showed that when a group of people meditated together, the effects of meditation create harmonious waves of energy and information that go out into the field and literally lowered the crime rate within a certain radius. Okay, we're talking physical results. There's been many studies now with meditation and they show the, and I've had so many clients over the years report things like, um, the meditation created deep inner calm. Um, they know it, re it, it releases the depression and anxiety. The um, studies have shown that it helps with insomnia. It releases physical pain. It can lower blood pressure and heart rate. It helps people finally sleep better at night. It's calming. It is soothing to the soul. It's soothing to the nervous system. It boosts the immune system. Um, what else? Oh my God, it helps with digestion, with elimination, with athletic ability with concentration and memory and focus, with creativity, with productivity. I mean, there's something in that bundle of gifts that it brings, and there's more that I'm probably not thinking of right now, that I'm sure you could relate to and that you might want personally, right? It opens up and expands your intuition. So if you don't even know what intuition is, this can help you. And the really cool thing is that when you meditate with someone like myself who has been meditating for a long time and I can just drop into a certain state of consciousness immediately, you begin to entrain, which is a fancy way of saying, you begin to sync up with me. And if you've ever seen experiments where they take a tuning fork, a, quite a, a number of tuning forks, and they strike one tuning fork, all of the others start to vibrate at the same note. That's what's going to happen here tonight. And we are going to drop into a deeper state of calm. And we are literally, each one of you will be able, will be emitting. First, it starts within. And then it starts to transmit out into this, literally this, the physical space around you. And so even people who don't meditate, who don't want to meditate, who don't care about meditating, who may be adding to the problems we're seeing. They will be affected because everyone is interconnected. 
And in this collective soup that we live in, all the information goes in there and it makes it easier and faster for people who are not interested in anything spiritual or anything kind and loving and compassionate. They're not interested in world peace. It does reach them, whether they know it or not. And it helps people wake up and many times even shift into a different state of consciousness. So when you meditate, it's a very high, high purpose. It's, it's not just a selfish thing. It's not just a relaxation technique. It's a way for you to tap in and become part of the solution on planet Earth. It is an exercise at practice that affects every, everything and everyone. And it is a form of a higher purpose. So those of you who have been struggling, and I know who you are, a lot of you have reached out to me. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what my purpose is. Uh, you have a purpose if, if you meditate. You, higher purpose doesn't mean you become famous and on billboards. Sitting in meditation for a short while every day is a very high purpose. And it's a selfless act because you may most likely not know all the people, all the places, all the situations that that act of compassion will even affect. So it's a very altruistic act in a way, but it will affect you personally and your family or whoever you're around, your children, your animals. Um, so again, um, I appreciate you being here. It, it says a lot about you, the fact that you're even here and we have over a hundred people. In fact, I just realized, I hope if people are trying to get in and, they're, and we've reached capacity that they know to go to Facebook. So, um, all right, I just wanted to say a couple more things that came to me while I was meditating earlier, because I can't stress enough. We get fooled very easily. And, and those of you who can relate to this or wanna know more about this, or if this shakes you up, which I hope to do for a lot of you, I hope to shake up your, your thinking here and get you a little uncomfortable because if our, our, if our best thinking on this planet has gotten us where we are, something's wrong with our best thinking because we still don't get along with each other. Something's wrong with that, in my opinion. And so if, our, our thinking needs, needs to shift in some way. And part of the reason that the thinking is skewed is because everybody focuses on what they can see and hear and touch, and they think that's real. But as I said earlier, the physical world is the last place that anything shows up. The inner world of subtle energy. And that includes your thoughts and your emotions. Your energy field, your thoughts and your emotions. Your energy field is an extension of your body. And what, what shows up in the physical actually starts in the subtle, in the thoughts and in the emotions, in that energy field. And so then it shows up in the physical the physical is nothing more than a slower vibration that is slow enough that you can see it. And where, whoever and wherever the idea that the invisible world is woo-woo couldn't be further from the truth. The invisible world is more real than the physical world. It is the precursor to the physical world. So we need to be shaken up and start to shift our thinking and notice more what's going on in the subtle level of energy. And those of you who want to understand more about what I'm talking about, since I can't really teach a lot tonight, is get a copy of my book. You can get a copy that you can touch and underline on Amazon, or you can go to my website. I'll give you those links in a moment and download a free digital, digital copy. It's called, Why Do I Still Hurt? rapid relief for chronic pain, depression, anxiety, and more. But it will explain to you this underlying philosophy that, that underlies any pain pattern or problem, even if it's in the world, it applies what I teach in here. And this is like a workbook where it, it gives you exercises to start to get your thinking out of, of the conventional box and opens your eyes to a new way of looking at everything that's physical and understand it from a deeper, Point of view. 
and there are exercises you can write and it, it will shift you to the core. Now, if you don't like writing, um, in fact, let me, would someone be kind enough to type into the chat? Um, I'm gonna, the, um, oh, here, I'll just do it. It's the www.internationalcpi.com. That's the website URL where you can find everything you need, how to work with me further or get a copy of the book. And if you go to internationalcpi.com forward slash free gifts, you'll get a copy of the book, the digital copy. You'll also get three short little videos that will help you understand even more about the subtle level of your th thoughts and your emotions and your energy field and how those are showing up in your life and how to release the ones that are damaging to you that are causing problems and pain and symptoms in your life. And you can follow along in those videos that I've created for you. Now, why is this important and what does this have to do with what's going on on the planet? Well, there are certain, I guess the, the primary thing I want you to remember tonight, if you remember nothing else, is that you can't dictate peace on earth. Peace is an individual choice. One person at a time has to wake up and want peacefulness in their life. They have to one person at a time want, make a decision, make choices every single day to be peaceful. Even if you don't feel it, to act peacefully. Even if you don't feel like you want to be peaceful, but to act peacefully. It's a decision and it's a, a form of individual responsibility. They could pass laws left and right and it won't make people peaceful. You can't make people be anything. I can't make you do anything. You have to be willing. Now I know all the people on this call are here because you're not violent, crazy people. You, you obviously are working on yourselves. You're aware you want something for, you know, to either be better in your life or in the life of others or your family or the planet. So I'm probably, you know, preaching to the choir here, but it is important that you realize this because you may have blind spots as well. Most people do. And I wanted to just share a list of things came to me this morning that I wanted to share that are typically, these are what stands in the way of our peace. Oh wait, somebody's, I miss, I think I need to check the chat because is there some kind of, my fingers are red? Oh, it's just your video. My fingers are not red, but if you're seeing the auric field, you may see the energy that comes out of my hands. So maybe that's what you're seeing. Um, some, those of you that might see auras, I've got a lot of energy running through me right now and you may be, you may be seeing that. So, but I don't want to, I'm not going to go to the chat. I kind of want to finish my, my train of thought here. There, there are things that stand in the way of our own individual peace, and they are things like, one, the need to control other people, the need to control in general, the need to control and get things to go my way, my way. I want what I want, and I want it when I want it. This, you'll never find peace with that attitude at the same time and with trying to make that happen. Often what stands in the way of peace has to do with boundaries and not knowing how to set healthy boundaries with other people. So you may be letting people walk all over you. You may not be speaking up. You may not be speaking your truth. You may be hiding and backing down and cowering. You may be, be allowing people to bully you or literally abuse you. I am not saying don't confuse peacefulness with being a doormat or allowing people to tromp all over you. No, no, no. This is what I teach deeper in my pain-free living program for those of you who, and you know who you are when, if you need help with that, don't let this go on. This is at the root of a lot of pain and trauma and symptoms. Another thing is 
giving your power away to people, places, and things. Everything I just mentioned is a form of giving your power away, but we do it many different ways. We do it by pretending that everything's just fine. That's what I did for years. It almost killed me. Oh, everything's fine, fine, just fine. I got this. And I was dying inside, pretending, um, deciding that you, you have to be right. If you want to be right more than you want peace, you're going to have a problem. Some battles are not worth fighting. You have to choose those wisely. I'm not going to here to tell you which to choose, but see, you will know. And if you're drained of energy, you won't even have the energy to be happy, even if you could be, be peaceful, because you'll be so burned out from fighting every battle and make, you know, needing to be right all the time. It's exhausting. And it, it weaves into that need to control. So ask yourself an important question before you go to battle with people, with anyone, with even just having a conversation, ask yourself, is it really true? Is it necessary that I say this? And is it kind? See, is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? And if you answer yes to all three, then you probably need to speak up. But if you don't, think about it before you communicate whatever it was you were about to communicate. There's a saying I learned years ago that I thought was so stupid at the time, but now I live by it. And, and that's live and let live. And again, another reason we're not at peace is because we don't know how to allow other people to differ, have a different opinion, a different viewpoint, to look differently, to want to act differently in their lives. Now, I'm not condoning um, violence, cruelty, anything like that. I'm saying it, but if someone doesn't agree with your opinion or want to live their life the way you do. That doesn't make you wrong and it doesn't make them wrong. And learning to live with the diversity of opinions and variety, this is what makes life rich and full and beautiful when we learn how to get along and allow the diversity and it brings peace. So it's a choice, it's back to that choice again. The other big thing that gets in the way of peace both inner and outer worldly peace, and this is probably, I sh probably should be at the top of the list, is unresolved emotions. Unresolved anger, fear, resentment, hatred, sadness, guilt, shame, all these emotions, if they're not really resolved, you won't be at peace, no matter how much you try to stuff it, deny it, suppress it, repress it, ignore it, medicate it, numb it out, drug it out. If you try to put those emotions and keep them out of out from being felt and released, it will show up as some kind of symptom of pain in your life. So I teach people, if you want to heal, you must learn to feel. If you want to heal, you must learn to feel. And again, I teach this in very easy ways that you will learn if you work with me further. Um, trauma. Now, trauma means many different things to many different people. Trauma does not, this stands in the way of peace, of health. And trauma, you know, when, you, when I used to think of trauma, I used to think of going to war, literally, like going to Iraq and fighting. Trauma anymore, mm -mm, we're all going, undergoing some form of trauma, collective trauma. Um, you get on the freeway at 80 miles an hour with someone on your tail, tailgating you, it's traumatic, the pace of life. Uh, people are having traumatic experiences just living life now. Here's a scary statistic. And this was before the pandemic. Two out of every three people were paying money to get professional help because their stress level was so over the top. They were getting professional help for stress. Two out of every three on planet well, in the US. And that was before May, okay? These statistics are actually a, probably a couple years old. So can you imagine what it is now? It's like all of us, right? <laughs> We're all in the soup. So we need tools, we need practices. 
in order to stay grounded and calm and centered and become what I call the eye of the storm so that if the winds are whipping about us, we can stay calm and grounded and not just freak out and end up tossed about like a piece of driftwood and land wherever we land. We have more power than that. And those of you who like to control, <laughs> We, we can control our thoughts, our, our attitudes, and it's not even about controlling with tension. It's about choosing wisely and really asking in every moment, do I want to be right or do I want peace? And I'm not saying you should never fight for being right. You may need to, but that's a different conversation and it's an individual choice. So there's a lot more I could say, um, but the biggest thing of all is that I'll, I'll end with this and then I'll go into the meditation. And by the way, we will finish before the hour is up. I just realized, I don't think my laptop's plugged in. Give me one second, I'm losing power here. I'm giving my power away. And I wanna take it back. Where did the, huh, that's, Really strange. Maybe I plugged. Um, well, let me just say this. If for any reason I end up off this call, I will come back on a different computer. I don't know why, but it does happen sometimes where I affect the computers. <laughs> And what's really weird is everything's plugged in, but I'm still losing power. And I've never seen that happen before. So, all right, it is what it is. Okay, so the, I wanna just close with this uh, comment before we do the meditation. Oh, and I'll check the chat. The world is filled with technology right now, filled with it, all kinds of, incredible technology like this lovely computer. But we have inner technology. And I would like to shout it from the rooftops because what happens if the lights go out? Last night we had a blackout in my community where I live. The whole part of the city blacked out. No electricity, no power. My cell phone wasn't charged. So what would you do if you didn't have candles, matches, a lighter, a cell phone, electricity? What would you do? You see, you need inner technology. I'm not, I don't mean to say this in a frightening way. What I'm saying is that if you have a practice like meditation, you will tap into information that comes from a source greater than your intellect, greater than your intellect. You will get guidance. You will know what to do even in baffling situations. You will in a general way more often feel more safe and comfortable in the universe. You will know that you're not alone. You will, I sat meditating this morning and this happens to me regularly. In such a state of bliss, I cannot even describe it in words. It was ecstatic bliss and I don't feel that way all day long in my daily life, but in meditation, I can go there like that. And that has a, a carryover into my physical health, my energy level in my daily life. And I can go back and plug into that without electricity anytime I want. And some of you may do that by going out in nature. It doesn't have to be a formal meditation technique, but we, we have our inner technology, the frequencies that we need to stay healthy and on a very high vibration, they're emitted from the earth. They come in like a live stream through the cosmos, literally. And you can tap into all that by meditating, by being in nature. Those are the two most profound and quickest ways. So you owe it to yourself if you really want health and peace, if you really wanna help the planet or your family, your children, to tap into something that brings you back to that frequency, the vibration of love and peace every day, not just once every 20 years. 
love is the highest vibration there is. It is the great healer. It's everywhere present. So you're not lacking anything. You're not lacking peace or love or joy or any good thing or abundance or prosperity. You're not lacking. You've got other stuff in the way clouding over the real you and you've got to release all that. And that's what I teach. And that's what I do in my programs. And that's what I do with high speed energy healing. And that's what we're going to do tonight as well. And that's what a meditation practice helps with. It's not as fast as high speed healing, but it's something you can do on your own without me. I can help you speed all that up and learn to maintain that vibration. Because remember, the love, the higher vibration lifts up anything lower. It lifts it up. And that's how other people are affected by us. We don't want to sink down in the well with them. We want to be able to lift others up. That's what a meditation like tonight, a meditation practice that you do daily, or participating in high speed energy healing, that's what it does for you and for others. And the ripple effect, you won't even know the power of the ripple effect. It could, one, one person that you reach, that you touch, could affect millions of people and you may never even know it. So it's pretty exciting. All right, let me look at some of these, the, the chat before we do the meditation. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah's saying, I love your insights and advice. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You inspire me by being here. Live and let, let live. That is freedom, Elizabeth. That is true freedom. Um, Sarah, don't be concerned if you're seeing red. <laughs> it's a good thing. Um, let's see. What else we have? If you have a question, please put it in the chat for me now or type if you're on Facebook, uh, put your questions in the chat and I will definitely answer every question at, uh, on Facebook later if I can't get to it now. Um, and if you want to learn transcendental meditation, I don't teach that you have to go to the TM Institute. They do teach that. And it's for not for everybody, but I love it. Um, I do have a meditation program. If those of you, uh, if you go to www.internationalcpi.com forward slash C2C, it's the letter C and the number two in the letter C. That's, it's called From Chaos to Calm with Meditation Made Easy. That's the link where you can find it. And, um, you can get it and practice it. It's a workshop and then five different meditation techniques. Um, let's see, does anybody else have any questions before we get going? Any other comments, please type it in the chat. And thank you again, everybody for being here. It's so wonderful to have you. All right, let's do this. Let us, um, when we go into this, the meditation now, make sure you are not driving. You are in a very safe place, sitting down. Um, better to sit down than to lie down because I don't want you to fall asleep. And you want to stay awake and aware so that you can participate in this guided meditation. If you fall asleep, it's not the end of the world, but if you can remain alert and if you're sitting up straight, that will help. You want to take everything off your lap. Don't worry about jewelry or metal or anything like that. That won't matter. You just want to be comfortable. So if you've got something sticking you in your pocket, take that out. If a belt's too tight, just get comfortable. And if you're in a chair with a back to it, I want you to lean back into the chair so that you have some support and just sit up really, really tall and let your feet be comfortable and just turn your palms up and place them either in your lap or on your thighs or on the chair or on the arms of the chair, just wherever you find is most comfortable. And now close your beautiful eyes. Remember, if you've never meditated before, it's okay. You will be just fine. Just listen to the sound of my voice, everyone. As you close your eyes and take a deep breath, 
in and open your mouth and let out a big sigh and let your whole day go now. Relax your belly, breathe into your low belly and draw that breath up into your beautiful heart. And now open your mouth and let out a sigh and let your whole day go. Everything we've talked about go, everything you think you know about your body, your health, the world, life, just let it all go empty as you breathe out, empty yourself of all the things you've learned and the things you think you know. And just for this time we're together, open yourself with a beginner's mind, like the mind of a child who's just happy to be here, isn't trying to figure anything out, just open to the experience. I'd like you to use your imagination now as you listen to the sound of my voice. I'd like you to imagine at the top of your head, there's a little door. I'd like you to open the door at the top of your head wide open. Imagine there's a door in the center of your forehead between your eyebrows and open the door on your forehead, wide open. Imagine now there's a door right in the center of your throat. Open the door in your throat. Imagine there is a door in the center of your heart open the door of your heart wide open and with the doorway at the top of your head open the doorway of your throat your communication open the doorway of your heart open be open to your inner experience. Be open to the connection to higher vibration, higher information that goes beyond anything you've ever learned. Just be open. And I'm going to ask you to use your imagination. And so with your eyes closed, I'd like you to think about, remember, something or someone that you love. Think of something or someone that you love. And notice when you think about that, it could be a place, an event, an experience, a person, an object, anything that you love. I want you to feel the feeling and notice where you feel it in your body that feeling of love. Feel it, imagine, think about someone or something you love. Now I want you to imagine in your right hand you have a remote control device. Just pretend and I want you to turn the volume of that love feeling, turn it all the way up, full power. You may find the feeling of love has a color. You may find the feeling of love has a sound. You may find that feeling is just very palpable and has sensations in your body. I want you to turn the remote and turn it up. See it brighter, hear it louder, feel it stronger. And allow it to flow through your whole body in every direction. It flows up, it flows down, it flows sideways out through you. It fills you up 
and flows like water with total ease in every direction through you. It begins to ooze out of every pore of your being, that love. It just comes out because it's the container of your body is so full. It actually moves out of every cell and starts to fill the space around you. Imagine the color, the sound, the sensation of love filling and flowing out into the space around you. Picture that, imagine that. And as you breathe in and out, feel, imagine, know. And now specifically think about someone or something on planet earth or anywhere that has been troubling you, that you're angry at, resentful of, afraid, ashamed, feel guilty about. And I want you to send this love directly to that place, that event, the person, the people, send it out, direct it right now. Feel into the experience. I want you to begin to notice who else, where else, what else has been troubling you? What else needs, who else needs love and healing? And I want you to take, use your imagination. And with that vibration of love fully turned up, send it out now. Direct it with your conscious intention. You can even silently say or out loud say, I intend to send this to and fill in the blank. And those of you that feel ready, I want you to begin to send it to everyone on our entire planet. Everyone, everywhere. Imagine the color, the sounds, the feeling of love is transmitted just like music through the air. And imagine everyone around the planet receiving the love you're sending. Play, pretend, allow it to be fun and send And as you send out now, keep it moving out into space beyond the planet of Earth. Imagine the power of the love going out into the universe to every star, every galaxy, every other planet, every other universe into infinity into the entire cosmos, whatever that would look like or feel like to you. And remember, you can't do it wrong. Just use your imagination and let whatever comes come to you. And send the love. You are a force for good in the universe, you. You are a generator of love. Send it, know it, feel it, experience it. It's unlimited. You could send it out indefinitely. 
and never run out. Send it particularly to those that cause you conflict, that push your buttons, those that you don't like. Send every bit of love you can muster Love transforms. Love is the healer. When people feel loved, when people feel love and experience love, they act with love. Love heals soul sickness. Love heals pain. Send the love to those that are in pain and suffering. Now take a minute or two in silence now and allow this to keep flowing from you, from every cell of your being flowing out and out and out. And remember what you send out comes back to you multiplied. You are a powerful force for good in the universe. You, yes, you. Use it now. Take another moment now and gently breathe in through your nose and bring it up, up, up into your beautiful heart and open your mouth now and let out a big sigh and silently or out loud, say the words, follow along. I am love. I am peace. I am a force for good in the universe. I am enough just the way I am. I choose love. I choose peace. Take a beautiful, gentle breath in and a gentle breath out. Feel yourself becoming more alert, more awake, more aware and staying very, very relaxed. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and come all the way back now. Awake, alert, relaxed and slowly, gently open your beautiful eyes and come all the way back now. My friends, I'm so happy and honored that you're here today. I hope you felt the power of that. If anybody did, please raise your hand, give me a thumbs up, type a yes in the chat. 
Do you feel the effects of just taking a few minutes to experience the inner peace? Yeah. What if you did that every day just for a little moment, a few moments? You're welcome, Terry. Yeah. So my computer, for whatever reason, is about to say bye bye. Uh, I'm, my cat was on my lap, says Sarah, the whole time and placed her paw on my solar plexus. How beautiful is that? The animals feel the vibration like that. They're amazing. For those of you who are joining me at the top of the hour at five o'clock Pacific in uh, eight minutes in the high speed healing universe, we'll continue the conversation. For those of you that were here and are new to my universe, I'm so honored and I hope you'll come back. I do periodic free calls on Wednesdays at four. I also have a way you can do join me for calls like this every week. It's called the High Speed Healing Universe. You'll find it on my website at www.internationalcpi.com forward slash HSHU. It stands for High Speed Healing Universe. You can join and hop in there at five o'clock and join us today. I would love to have you in there as a member. Um, reach out to me if you need more support. I so appreciate every one of you who has participated today. I really ask all of you from the bottom of my heart to help. If you want to help what's happening on earth, meditate, take a walk in nature, spend a little five, 10, 15, 20 minutes of quiet time per day, you will be helping in a much grander way than you realize. And the most important thing is choose, choose the peace. Choose to be and act and speak and think and feel from that place of peace. It takes daily practice, you know, for myself included. There are things happening that I just want to, right? And so it, it, it takes a pause, a stepping back, a wanting to really bring the best me to the party. And it's an individual choice. Nikki, I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad, I'm glad this was helpful. And Lisbeth, I'm so glad you're always so, you know, so uh, participating. Carol, you're so welcome. Elizabeth, nice, or Sarah, nice to have you. Sandy, oh my God. Sandy is pure love. <laughs> um, I'm so glad, Deborah, that you felt that was wonderful. That's awesome to hear. Everybody, thank you so much. Wow. Elaine, you're so welcome. Uh, so welcome, so welcome. Yeah, Elizabeth is saying her hands got very hot. Yeah, I was trying to get it right on her 